Joining me, Rabbi Jeffrey Myers of the Tree of Life Congregation in Pittsburgh. Rabbi, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this has got to be a tough day for you. It's just five months out since what happened at your synagogue. Seeing a similar style attack by a white supremacist, what, what's going through your head? To me, it was as though I'm living the movie Groundhog Day as a horror film all over again. You say you describe it as a horror film and as Groundhog's Day. What do you do? Um, what do you do to, to make it stop? What can we do to make it stop? If I give the answer, I should probably get the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, I don't think you can eliminate evil in the world, but I can think that we can't let evil be the one element in our society that overwhelms all the good that is out there. Because when we do that, we let that win. And I don't think that's a place we want to have this world be. So we need to remember that no matter how many of these incidents do occur, and regrettably one is one too many in our world, there is so much good in the world. I wish I could just list off three easy answers and say this will solve it. It's far more complex than that. When we look at the, the similarities that these attacks have, uh, other than white supremacists, what we see is easy access to guns, number one, and number two, the use of social media, the use of social media to, to cultivate that hate, to, to find others who believe in it as well, and then also to spread that hate, to spread their, their, their actions to show the world what they're doing, sometimes even in real time, or to give the world a minute by minute um, update on it. When you look at those three things, I mean, are, are you, are you, is there, is there a solution that can lie in, in trying to address one of those? I believe so. I don't think the solution is addressing the manifestations of, of this. And uh, you forgive me for just explaining that I took a, an, a pledge months ago that I don't use the word hate. To me, it's a four-letter word, an obscenity. And the way to remove that is to not use it. So I call it the H word. To go to the root of the issue is, is not to look at the events that occur, but the sources of it, which means speech. And where do you get your H speech from? You get it from lack of understanding, a lack of education, a lack of respect for the community that surrounds you. So certainly to me, uh, one element is the language, the tone of, of discourse in our country is less civil, it's more uncivil. We don't know enough about our neighbors, about the beautiful customs and traditions that they're about. We need to be able to learn more about our neighbors to appreciate, for example, the beauty that is Islam. When we understand that better, then we can respect our neighbors more, find that we have so much more in common with our neighbors. Those are, I think, critical pieces to solving it. You can't cut off the greens on the top of the weed and expect it to go away. You've got to carefully excise the root. And to me, the root is speech. I don't want to get into anybody specific, but we have seen a rise among world leaders, a number of leaders, both here and abroad, uh, targeting races, targeting religions, uh, trying to ban religions, trying to 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 claim that some people are all are all out for this other group of people, and speaking in these broad generalities in order to condemn an entire section society of people. How do we? at home tamp down on that? Uh, what responsibility do we have for our own leaders? I don't think our leaders have served us well when they are the ones to model the proper way to speak and behave with each other. When they're uncivilized towards each other, they give us the permission to therefore act that way with our neighbors. I don't see that changing anytime soon in our elected leaders. It, I think it has to come from the ground up, from ordinary citizens who say, we've had enough of how you behave. This is unacceptable. And we're going to demonstrate for you the way you should be behaving. 
Do you and your congregants feel safe? That's a really good question. Um, I think it's a relative term. Uh, I know I spoke this morning with uh, one of the leaders of the Islamic Center. That was my first phone call. And among the many phone calls he had to make was to contact the Pittsburgh police because just like October 27th, his people do not feel safe. That's not what America should be about. Do my people feel safe? Um, I don't really have an answer right now. I think I'm going to find out when we have our Sabbath services this evening and then tomorrow morning, A, by how people respond, and B, by the turnout. Either the turnout will be increased because we have greater need to comfort uh, and mourn the loss of, of life this way, or people will feel unsafe and not want to come into a house of worship. Quite frankly, I encourage all people of all faiths, now is the time to be in your house of worship, because when you don't go, you let this evil win, and we can never, ever let that happen. Don't let the evil win. Don't let the H word win. Rabbi Jeffrey Myers of the Tree of Life Synagogue. Rabbi, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.